Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, machine learning, optimization, applied mathematics, robotics, mechatronics, etc. In this Control Engineering tutorial I will explain how to construct a root locus in Python. In addition to that I will explain how to extract the locations of the closed loop poles and corresponding gains of a transfer function from root locus plot. This tutorial is based on the Python control systems library. This library is very very useful tool for control system analysis and design. For example, by using this library you can construct transfer functions, state space models, you can perform step response analysis, you can compute frequency response, you can construct Bode and Nyquist plots, you can design controllers by using either the placement method LQR, H2 or H infinity. Some of you might ask me the following question. Why do we need this Python library when we have MATLAB? And we can do all sorts of fancy things. We can design controllers, perform stability analysis by using the MATLAB control systems toolbox. The answer is very simple. This library is completely free. On the other hand, if you are working for a company or a startup, you will have to pay thousands of dollars for a MATLAB license. On the other hand, this library is free and you can start designing controllers for free and immediately. By the way, I would like to mention that I am a fan of MATLAB. But before I start, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as almost 300 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube page and consequently I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start with the installation of this library. The installation process is pretty much straightforward and as you can see over here I will demonstrate this process by using the Anaconda Navigator. The first step is to open your base or root environment. You can do that by clicking over here and then clicking over here and then open the terminal. And you just need to write pip install control. And that's it. As you can see over here, I have already installed this library, so you have these messages requirement already satisfied. However, in your case, you will see the installation progress, and after maybe a few seconds, everything will be completed. Here's another important comment. As you can see over here, I'm using the spider environment. And it's very important to start the spider environment from your Anaconda Navigator because only in that way you will be able to import the control library. Okay, let's start from scratch. The first step is to import the necessary libraries. As you can see over here, I'm importing the control systems library as CT. Then we need to import the plotting tools. Let's learn how to define transfer functions by using the Python control systems library. Consider this transfer function. W of s is equal to 3s squared plus 2s plus 1. And in the denominator, we have, for example, 8s to the power 3 plus 2s squared plus 5. Let's learn how to construct this transfer function by using the Python control systems library. The construction process is relatively simple. We need to construct two lists corresponding to the coefficients of the polynomials in the numerator and the denominator. Let's call the first list as numerator. And this list will take all the coefficients of this polynomial. The coefficients are 3, this is the coefficient, 2, and 1. Let's construct another list corresponding to the polynomial in the denominator. Consequently, we will have 8, 2, then over here what happens? 
we don't have a term s. Consequently, the coefficient is 0. And over here, we have 5. Once we have these two lists, we can construct the transfer function. So let's do that. In the numerator, I have 3, 2, 1. And consequently, over here, I will type 3, 2, 1. In the denominator, I have 8, 2, 0, 5. Let's construct that part. 8, 2, 0, 5. Just add a comma over here. Don't forget to do that. Then we call this function dot tf and ct corresponds to our control systems library. So let's see our transfer function. And you can simply print it out. Here it is. 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 8, 2, 5. Perfect. Since I want my root locus plot to be nice, I will not be using this transfer function and consequently I will erase it and I will construct a new transfer function. My transfer function has the following form. In the numerator I have s plus 2. Consequently I type s plus 2 and in the, in the denominator I have s squared. Let's adjust our transfer function. So over here I have coefficients, let's see, 1 and 2. So I write 1, 2. In the denominator, let's see what I have over here. I have 1 multiplying s square. So consequently, I need to type over here 1. Then, what else do I have here? Since this is the highest term with the highest power, I have two additional terms that are 0. I have another term over here and let me write it down not to confuse you I have plus 0 times s and plus 0 times 1 and consequently my denominator list will have the following form 1 comma 0 comma 0 okay perfect let's construct the transfer function and let's see the result here it is next let us learn how to construct root locus of this transfer function. For, this, for that purpose, I will use this script. First, I need to define my figure. And I'm using plot.subplots to define the figure. I specify the figure size, 15,8. Then, I need to specify x and y axis limits. My x axis will go from minus 10 to 0 0.5 and my y-axis will go from minus 2.5 to 2.5. My suggestion to all of you is to first construct the root locus plot and I will explain this function later on and then adjust these axis limits such that you get a nice graph. Then over here I will set x and y axis labels. They will be real and imaginary part over here, I will adjust the font size of the numbers on my x and y axis. I use this parameter or this function tick parameters. I specify the size to be 14, such that you can nicely see it. And over here, I construct the root locus. Let's explain this function in more details. The name of the function is root underscore locus. The first input parameter is our transfer function. Then we specify x and y axis limits. We specify this parameter plot to true. That is, we are saying to Python that we want to generate the graph while calling this function. And this option does not work in my case. And apparently this option is used to interactively see the gain from the graph. So I keep this option to true. However, I'm not sure why it's not working in my case, maybe because I'm using the spider environment. And over here we set x to x since we want to use predefined axis properties. And finally over here I save my figure in a file, I call the file root locus.png and here I specify the resolution. My advice is always to use 600 dots per, per inch as resolution. What should be mentioned over here is that this function returns the closed-loop poles and the corresponding gains. 
That is, this would be a list or a vector containing all the closed loop poles, and this would be a list or a vector containing all the gains corresponding to these closed loop poles. And let us finally construct the root locus by running this script. Select everything and click on run selection or current line. And let's see the result. And voila, here's our root locus. How can we verify the accuracy of this root locus plot? That's a very good question. Okay, let's do a quick evaluation. Here's our transfer function. It is s plus 2 over s squared. In my next video tutorial, I will explain a simple method for constructing a root locus plot by hand. However, over here, I will just give a few guidelines. The first rule is that the root locus should start from poles of the open loop function. The poles of the open loop function are s1 is equal to 0 and s2 is equal to 0. And as we can see over here, our root locus plot actually starts from s1 is equal to 0 and s2 is equal to 0. Then, the root locus should end in finite and infinite zeros of our transfer function. The finite zero is minus 2 and the infinite zero can be plus minus infinity. Let's check if this is correct. Uh -huh, over here I see minus 2. Hmm, perfect. So one branch of my root locus should definitely end here and it actually ends. The graph shows that. And another branch of my root locus goes to minus infinity. And that's perfect. Okay. And the root locus apparently looks like this. One branch starts from zero. It goes this way. Another branch goes in the opposite direction. And everything is symmetric because the root locus is symmetric with respect to the real axis. They meet here. Then one branch goes to minus 2 and another branch goes to minus infinity. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.